Hello crafty friends, this is card number 33 in the full deck challenge. This one is going to pull you totally out of your comfort zone. It's something totally unexpected and different. So give it a go and just don't think about it too much, just let the art happen. This piece is inspired by Lisa Goddard. I'm absolutely fascinated by her style and I find her very inspiring. I will put a link to her work in the description below. I'm starting with an A5 size index card that is from an index card book that I have that is actually quite old that I found in our offices when we were cleaning them out and I've ripped it out and I've left the rough edge of the spiral with all the little bits hanging off because I like that rustic look. This perhaps is not an altered playing card it is a piece of art that will include a playing card in it. But there are no rules, we can experiment and do whatever we like. I'll start by sticking down some collage pieces just randomly over the page. I'm using Mod Podge to adhere them, but you can use anything that you use for gluing down your mixed media. I've included some pieces of cardstock that have things punched out, for example the stars or the circles. This will show texture in the end so I'm actually building texture for when I apply my color on top if you're not sure why I do this and why I'm putting all this down if I'm just going to cover it up with paint later do have a look at my video on the reasons why I collage first I'll put a link to that video in the description below it's quite interesting I think and it'll give you an idea of why I'm doing all this if I'm just going to cover it up afterwards I'm adding a piece of white tissue paper over the face of the card. I'm not quite sure at this point in time how I'm going to incorporate the card in the art piece, but I'm putting the tissue paper in preparation if I'm going to paint it. The next step is I'm going to add some white gesso. I'm going to cover most of this with the gesso. I'm going to do a thin layer so you can still see the collage pieces or the prints from underneath and then as you've noticed, I have used the lined side of the index card. I did this on purpose just to add additional interest. I can use a paintbrush or I also enjoy using my finger just to spread the gesso over all the areas. I do some areas thicker than others so it's a more solid white. In other areas I leave it a bit more light so that the bottom colours and textures shine through. I'm now going to add some additional texture with texture paste through a stencil. The stencil I'm using is from Kmart here in Australia. I'm not going to add some color. I'm going to use my color burst powders, but you could also use watered down acrylic paints or watercolors. I just love the vibrancy of these powders, so I'm going to use these and I start off with a beautiful turquoise. Once I have applied the powder, I do spray with some water from my little spray bottle and I also use a very wet paintbrush to help the color move along on the page. I also move the page up and down back and forth and sort of let it run um, in its own direction. Now I'm also going to add some purple. You can see the beautiful designs it creates there where the texture paste is as the color goes light and dark as it goes into the grooves. I'm going to use some bright colors. You can also tone it down and make maybe more vintage colors, just depending how you feel or what products you have. I'm sprinkling some white dilutions ink and adding some water and letting it move around. This will lighten some of the darker colors and create some more patterns with the color. Thank you. 
don't be afraid to experiment with color in this project. The idea is just to try things you haven't tried before and add lots of water to help the colors move and flow. It's really a lot of fun to see where they're going to go and what patterns they're going to create. And now I've made quite a big puddle of a lovely magenta color over there. So I'm going to take my brush and just splatter the same color on another part of the card. This is totally intuitive. I go and do as it's happening. I don't, haven't really planned how I'm going to do this. So just have fun. And now I'm going to do something very drastic that a lot of people start to panic when they see the color black. Use black, it's fun, it's contrasting. I'm going to add a little bit on the edge and let it run into the grooves of where the stenciling is and it creates brilliant contrast. Don't be afraid to use black. And another of my favorites, splatter. I'm going to add some black splatter also on part of the project. And now another shock. I'm going to rip this up. We're going to rip on the top and the bottom and on each side. We're going to do it quite roughly so we don't have straight edges. We want that rough look because we're going to rip it apart and then we're going to put it back together in different areas. So it muddles up the colors and brings beautiful interest to the project. This is the part that I loved the most that I saw that Lisa Goddard had done and I thought I have to do this too. Absolutely love it. Isn't that so much more interesting? And then I run it under my sewing machine with some black thread. I don't go all the way around nice and straight, just in the corners, up and down, back and forth, leave some bunching bits as well. Let the strings hang, leave it rough and abstract. A little bit more gesso, just in certain areas. And I'm also going over some of the black string, which makes it more interesting so you don't have just black string all around just a few lightened areas for more contrast another word i like to use a lot if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe to my channel i have lots of videos coming your way and hit the little notification bell so you're notified every time i upload new content watch out for my monthly mini giveaway i have a little giveaway in one of my videos every single month I've decided to incorporate the playing card as part of the focal point of my artwork. So I have the little Tim Holtz ballerina girl, she's a little cut out, that I'm going to have as my focal point. And then just behind her is going to be some cheesecloth, some different layering. I've got this beautiful pink, like a, it's like a voile with little sparkles on, which I think suit quite well. And the card will be just underneath as part of her background so it's not going to be the focal point in itself it's going to be part of the artwork i'm just going to edge it a bit with some distress ink in black just to make it stand out slightly but i'm not going to do much more to it if you'd like to join in my full deck challenge you can also join my group on facebook just search full deck challenge group you'll get inspiration and you can also share everything that you make it's a great little community i'm going to stick everything down with my hot glue And then I also have a little word, it says dream with a dictionary meaning that I have attached to the top. I feel that my black bunchy string is a little bit too dense, so I'm just thinning it out by cutting a few of the strings to make it a little bit thinner. Let me bring this closer to the camera so you can see all the beautiful textures and details of this project. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you were inspired to try and create your own. Something, like I said, really different, really out of your comfort zone. Give it a go. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.